In this video I'm going to create this singlet. It's a basic singlet with a fine binding, single needle top stitch and a racer back. I've created the front first and then used the front to create the back. My pen tools are already out so what I'll do is start off with my basic pen tool and I'm going to draw half the front, reflect it and, and join it. So what I'm going to do is start drawing just above the bust line over here. A straight line because I'll put that shaping in later. I do need to have a fill, a stroke, but not a fill. And I think I would prefer to draw in another colour so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So what I've clicked centre front up to bra stripe to the side here, down to the side seam and now I'm creating the shape of my armhole, clicking back into that anchor point to convert it and then just above the waistline to create a little bit of shape by clicking, holding the mouse down and dragging and then down a little bit to the hip, clicking, holding the mouse down and dragging click back into that anchor point and come down to the center front. Go back to your selection tool. So what I'm going to do is add my curve to both of those points when I transform and reflect. The first thing I'm going to do though is with my direct selection I'm going to mark here over these two open end anchor points and I'm going to horizontal align to the right deselect, reselect, transform, reflect and copy. Remember if we have snap to point selected, if I pick up that anchor point, drag that across, I can snap that to point by putting it straight onto the other anchor point. I know that those two anchor points are on top of each other so all I need to do using my direct selection is mark key over them and join them. At the bottom, just in case they're not, I'm going to go average first and then join. So I'm getting that pop-up menu, the pop-up menu by using my right mouse button convert anchor point, click onto the center front over there and let's just check that we're creating a nice neckline with the armhole and a little bit of a curve at the center front here. And now if I click onto my default fill in stroke that will become black and white. To create the back, I'm going to do that immediately. Command Control C to copy, Control B for the back, and I'm just moving it up a little bit, or quite a bit. I'm going to make that pale grey, so we can see the fill needs to be pale grey. So what I needed to do was bring the fill to the front over here. So I toggle with X, direct selection and I'm going to move that back up a bit and move that down. So what I can see is that that back neck looks a little bit flat so I'll reconvert that by clicking onto the center, click and shift, hold shift and drag to change that shape a little. Now what I'm going to do is immediately create my back. So I'm going to move that up. My keyboard increment is one centimeter which makes it nice and big and I'm not moving up little bits at a time. Direct selection tool I will delete half of it. Direct selection tool to select that anchor point there where I can change the shape of that armhole by dragging the handle. 
selection tool, transform, reflect and copy again. Remember I can hold that anchor point and snap to point. Now because I've joined this over here I know that all of those anchor points are in line with each other and what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these two shapes together using the shape builder tool over here. So I select both of the shapes first of all. I come to the shape builder tool and you can see when I rest my shape builder tool on my selected shape it shades the area. Click your mouse and when I start to drag across you can see that it's highlighting one half only and when I get it to the other side it highlights both of those. I've got my mouse clicked and I'm holding it down and I'm dragging let go and now we have selection tool, a join shape that I can put back behind my other shape. Once we've copied this line we need to select it with our black arrow, the selection tool, and go into Object, Path, Offset Path. I've already got it set at 0.5 millimeters. We'll just preview that and go OK. What I need to do over here before I do anything else is I need to just use my direct selection tool to line that up with the path. So we could just bring that down a little bit more and that's lining it up. We'll do that on the other side. So control minus to zoom out, space bar to push across, zoom tool Z to zoom in. Direct selection A and there it is lining up with the path and we'll take that up a little. Minus, 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 so control minus selection tool, black arrow, and I'm going to select the binding and make that default black and white. Select the stitching or the red line, the original line, and turn that into stitching. If you can't see your, your options, you'll note that your options may be hidden. If we just come to this point over here, show options, select dashed line, I'm making it two points and two points, so two point dash, two point gap, 0.75 and a round cap. And I'm going to leave it at that. The next thing is I'll do the same with the back neck. Command Control C, Control F, remove the fill, object path offset path, preview, OK. Um, I'll go to default fill and stroke select my stitch line with my black arrow and I can come to the eyedropper and copy the stitch line over there. Following on from doing the neckline I'll now do the armholes. The same process applies here. I go to my direct selection tool, select that line only, copy it, Control C, Control F to the front again. Remember to remove the fill and if you want to we can just change the colour to red again and the same process, we go into Object, Path, Offset Path, 0.5. I don't even have to really preview it because I know it's fine. OK. Selection tool, 
we select the outline and once again I can eye drop the other stroke to get the outline select the stitch line and eye drop the dashed line to copy the properties at this point it's probably worth your while to select both the bindings the binding and the stitch line so what I've done with my selection tool is I've marked over the actual body and the binding and now if I hold shift I deselect the body I only have the stitching and the binding I can right click and group that I'll zoom in just so that we can line up the binding nicely with the actual body so click on to the direct selection and move that across to line it up with the side seam using my spacebar I go up to the shoulder point again and I select my direct selection and just move that down a little bit I can also move the stitch line down a little as well control minus to zoom out again Having grouped that, I can now copy that to the other side. Transform, reflect and copy. I can line the stitch line over here up with the underarm anchor point over there. It'll snap to point. The only thing left for me to do now is to do the back armholes as well. So I select the back shape, go into my keyboard increments, so edit preferences or control K. It is 10 millimeters, that's what I need and I go OK. Move that up out of the way. I'll take it all the way up here. I'm using my spacebar and I've used my arrows to move that shape up. Direct selection, the white arrow, deselect and then again select the armhole, Control C, Control F, toggle and forward slash or going down here will remove the fill. Once you start to do things again and again, it's probably best to learn the keyboard shortcuts. So I just toggled between the fill and the stroke by pressing the X key. Object, path, offset path, 0.5 is what we want. Selection tool, black arrow, eyedropper and once again selection tool and now I'll just move all the way back down here eyedropper and copy that stroke up here all that's left for me to do on this is to line my binding up with my shoulder selection tool, black arrow, select that binding. So I've marked over everything and now when I hold shift and click onto the back of the garment I deselect it, group, so I've right clicked and grouped, transform, reflect, copy and again I can use that anchor point over there to line up over there. Group everything and move it back down behind the other shape. So 
select the back neck binding and group mark here over the whole front hold shift to deselect the back and now we can group the front the only thing left to do is to do some hem stitching over here so we go in with our direct selection looking for that center anchor point select it, Control c Control f to bring that to the front, back to our selection tool and now I need to make my keyboard increment a lot smaller, I'm going to make it one millimeter and just move that up one millimeter I drop the stroke that we're using so it'll become two points, two points, round cap and 0.75 selection tool and copy that one millimeter up again and this time I can just drag that in so it's not hanging over the edge and that should be fine so now what I have is a singlet front and back and I'm just going to copy it select the whole front arrange and center back I will just swap these colors around so I need to select with my group selection tool this time come to my swatches, I know that it is I needed to bring, I need to bring my um, fill to the front select the front second last grey no, it's that grey select the back with my group selection tool so I'm selecting all the binding we make that white and then again we'll just copy that Control c Control f move that up, eyedropper and copy that up again and there the finished product is